Hello, it's State Senator Josh McCoon. I'm coming to you from the Coverdell Legislative Office Building on Thursday, February 27th. I'm going to give you a little bit of a recap because we weren't able to come to you last week uh, with a legislative update. Uh, talk a little bit about last week, a little bit about what's happened in these last uh, three legislative days leading up into next week in our crossover day, day 30. Uh, last week on Monday, uh, we had a couple of different items on the floor. We had uh, Senate Bill 60, uh, which I believe is an excellent bill. It uh, basically is taking us paperless on lots of different notices required under Georgia law, internal government notices that currently have to be printed and mailed. Uh, this will require uh, all of those where practical uh, will be submitted in electronic format. should save a lot of money, uh, save a lot of trees, and I think it's a good bill. I was pleased to be able to vote for it. Uh, and other than that, we had a fairly light calendar Monday. On Tuesday, uh, I had one of my first bills of the session come to the floor, Senate Bill 346. And essentially what it does, we have a nine-member board of the Department of Community Health that oversees, among other things, the state health benefit plan. There's been a lot of discussion in the news about issues regarding that plan and a lack of consumer input. Uh, so what my bill does is it requires one of the nine board members be actually enrolled in the state health benefit plan. It's good for consumers. It gives them a voice on the board. Hopefully it will improve communication and make sure that decisions that are made with regard to the state health benefit plan are done with the interest of those plan members firmly in mind. I was also pleased to join with the other members of the Senate in a very rare uh, sort of situation where we honored a uh, member of the other chamber, uh, in this case the Dean of the Georgia House, the Chairman of the Muscogee County Delegation, Representative Calvin Smyrie. We passed Senate Resolution 842 recognizing the tremendous honor he received to be inducted into the International Civil Rights Walk of Fame. It's an honor to serve with Representative Smyre, and I was glad to be able to participate in that honor for him on Wednesday. On Thursday of last week, again a fairly light calendar for us, but an important bill, an important bill to our area, Senate Bill 341. And what that bill does is it empowers clerks of the probate court to be able to handle uncontested matters uh, when the judge of the probate court is unavailable. Of course, as we have a aging population and probate courts get busier and busier, uh, the judge's time becomes harder and harder to calendar. And so this is going to provide a lot of flexibility to our courts. It's going to get a lot of work done in the uh, probate court quicker, uh, better service to the taxpayer at no additional cost. So I was proud to support it and appreciate my colleague Senator Jesse Stone for bringing it forward. We also had two very special guests last Thursday. Uh, Congressman Sanford Bishop of the 2nd Congressional District uh, came and addressed us. It was a pleasure to see him, along with Congressman Jack Kingston of the 1st District, who both addressed us on uh, matters that are going on in Washington, D.C., and uh, it was a pleasure to see them both. It's always great to be able to welcome members of our congressional delegation to our state Senate. Finally, we wrapped up the week on Friday with Senate Bill 299 involving watershed protection standards. And really what this bill does is it provides property owners uh, that find themselves in a watershed area, uh, it, it makes it easier for them to be able to develop their property, uh, do what they wish with their property. Uh, I believe it was important to move this bill forward uh, to improve the property rights of these landowners. I was delighted to vote for it and appreciate Senator Steve Gooch's leadership in bringing that forward. So that kind of takes us through last week. Uh, this week we were in session on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, uh, my colleague in Muscogee County, Senator Ed Harbison, brought forward Senate Bill 320 on veterans courts. Of course, we already have a veterans court in Muscogee County thanks to Senior Judge John Allen, who's been a leader on this issue. It essentially provides a streamlined process for dealing with uh, veterans who have had uh, criminal uh, issues in the criminal court. It pays special attention to uh, mental health issues that they might have, specifically post-traumatic stress disorder. It's something that's being done around the country. It's even being done in our state, but we wanted to standardize that process, and that's what Senate Bill 320 does. I was also very proud to support the Constitutional Amendment, Senate Resolution 415. This caps our state income tax. It makes absolutely certain that we will never increase the state income tax over its uh, stated amount of 6%. Uh, it passed the Senate. It goes on to the House. Uh, hopefully it will be uh, coming to you in November for your approval. In my view, it is the first step to abolition of the state income tax. First we're going to cap it, then we're going to phase it out. So I'm glad to participate in step one. Look forward to getting that done. 
Senator Johnny Isaacson visited us as well, and uh, it was a pleasure to see Senator Isaacson. He also gave us a Washington update, uh, and it, it was very good to see him at the Capitol. <coughs> On Tuesday, we considered Senate Bill 167. For those of you that are particularly interested in the Common Core and the problems surrounding the Common Core, Senator William Ligon has worked tirelessly for the last year and a half on this legislation to restore educational authority to Georgia uh, and kind of walk back a lot of what the Common Core does. I was an original co-sponsor of this bill. I was proud to stand with Senator Ligon as we passed it on Tuesday and that moves on to the House. We also took very important action on Senate Bill 397, uh, also known as Ava's Law. This has to do with providing autism coverage to children in Georgia. Uh, there are over 30 states around the country that have some sort of law on the books mandating insurance coverage for children with autism. Uh, Georgia had no such law. Uh, it's something that's been pending for several years now in the General Assembly. I was proud to uh, speak for this bill and to vote for this bill. I hope that it becomes law so that the children of Georgia will have uh, an opportunity for coverage for early intervention and improvement uh, when dealing with autism. And uh, finally on Tuesday, we considered and passed the fiscal year 2014 amended budget. Very few changes there, uh, specifically for Troop County uh, constituents. I do want to let you know that the $1.7 million for the Troop County school system to adjust for an error made in last year's budget calculations uh, remained in the amended budget and it's been uh, received final passage and has gone to the governor for his signature. And that finally brings us to yesterday, Wednesday. Had a couple of different bills, Senate Bill 93, uh, which authorizes the use of suppressors on hunting firearms. It's a good bill, it's good for hunting and sportsmen. I was glad to vote for it and appreciate Senator Bill Heath for bringing it forward. We also had Senate Bill 372. Uh, that's a bill that I authored. It came from a constituent in Columbus uh, who brought this to my attention that students in our public schools were not receiving unweighted GPAs that let them know how they're doing with respect to HOPE eligibility. They only really find that out their senior year, by then it's too late. Senate Bill 372 makes sure at the end of your freshman, sophomore, and junior year that you'll know what your GPA is, you'll know how close you are to HOPE without the weightings that are done with honors and AP courses that sort of skew the GPA from a HOPE reporting standpoint. So we passed that bill unanimously, look forward to it being considered in the House. And uh, we also worked on a bill uh, that Senator John Albers brought forward. I've spent a lot of time working on this legislation with him. It is to protect against identity theft in court filings, basically uh, making sure that Social Security numbers and other confidential information is redacted for your protection. Uh, we worked very hard on this for the last several weeks. Was glad to see it receive final passage in the Senate uh, yesterday and look forward to it moving over to the House. Um, with that, we concluded our week. Uh, next Monday is crossover day, day 30. It's the last day that a bill can pass either the House or the Senate and be alive for the remainder of the session. So if you've got any questions about what I've talked about today, if there's an issue that's important to you that you're monitoring as we move towards day 30, please give me a call at my Senate office. It's 404-463-3931. You can also find out a lot more information about me and other ways to contact our office at my website joshmccoon.com. It's a pleasure to serve you. Uh, I particularly appreciate the opportunity to represent State Senate District 29, and I will be back next week with an update from Crossover Day and the days ahead in your General Assembly.